Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Vice Codes, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a platformer in code.org. So to get started, I am going to create a player, and to do this, I am going to set the player to a new sprite at the X of 40, Y of 300, and a width and height of 20. And to show this sprite, I need to type draw sprites in the draw function. I'm also going to set the background to white, otherwise some problems are going to happen. Alright, so this is our player. Now to create the walls, what we want to do is create a group. I'm going to say var walls equals create group. Now a way I like to do stuff like this is I like to create a little section of code using these brackets and I put them in comments. And this way, if I were to type code in here, then I can actually just close the code up like this. And it just makes it so like the lines of code is cleaner because whenever you're coding, it's going to be kind of getting in the way and you'll have to do a lot of scrolling. So that's how I like to do this. And here you're going to say walls.add. And I'm going to create a new spread in here. 40, 350, 50, 50. So this will create a wall at the x40 y350 and it's going to be 50 pixels wide and tall so you can see it's right under my player so now let's go ahead and get some movement in so for me to create movement i'm actually going to create a function and i'm actually going to be creating functions for about every part of this program and in the player movement i'm going to say if key down right so that's going to detect the right arrow being pressed or key down D and that's to support W, S, and D because that's the controls I prefer to use. And what we'll do is say player.x plus equals speed. You're probably wondering what speed is. So let's go ahead and create that variable up here. We'll say we can say var speed equals four. Right? And now to make it so that we can move left, we can say if key down is left or key down is a and then we can say player.x minus equals speed instead of plus equals right and now we just add this into our draw function we call this function right so now we can actually move left to right now I want to show you guys gravity so let's create another function down here and I'm just going to call this player gravity and what this is just going to do is it's just going to move our player down. It's going to increase its velocity on the Y by a fixed amount in order to move the player down like gravity. So I'm going to create another variable called gravity. So let's go ahead and declare this variable up here equals 0.4. And now we just need to call this function inside of the draw function. So let's call player gravity. As you can see, the player moves down. We can move around. And yeah, it seems to be falling through this block though. So in order to fix that, I'm gonna create yet another function. And I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna call this player collision. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say player.collide walls. And this is a function that really handles like everything for us made by code.org, so it's quite simple. Now we just need to call this inside of our draw function. And I'm gonna call this last because when we move we want to check for collision at the end so that we move out of any blocks we moved into okay and now we can move around on this block and we collide with it and everything very cool as you can see the player is gray and the wall is also gray so in order to kind of make it separate so you can tell which one's the player and which one's the wall i'm going to go under my player variable and i'm just going to say player.shapeColor equals dark cyan you can choose any color here but my favorite one to choose is dark cyan now the final function we need is a way to check the ground and the reason we want to check the ground is because we need to see if the player is touching the ground and if they are then we can actually jump so this is part of our jumping functionality so the most recent way i found of doing this that seems to work well is increasing the player y by 0.5 this moves the player down just a little bit and then we can say touching ground equals 
player dot touching is touching walls then we go ahead and move the player back up to the position it was at so this touching ground variable we can actually create I'm gonna create it up here I'm just gonna say touching ground is equal to or sorry I need to declare this touching ground is equal to false okay so let's say the player was standing on the ground this function it would move the player down into the ground and then it would set the the variable touching ground to be if I was touching ground and since I'm inside of the ground then it would be true so I am touching the ground and then we'd move the player right back up so that it doesn't look like as if anything happened this function I'm going to call after my player gravity function and the draw function so now that we have a way of checking the ground we need to actually be able to jump so I'm going to create a new key down if statement if we are holding up or if we are holding space or if we are holding w there's a lot of ways there's a lot of keys for jumping okay and if this is the case then i'm going to say if touching ground and if we are then i'm going to say player.velocity y equal negative jump force and that is another variable that we need to create of our jump force equals six. All right, so let's go ahead and test this. As you can see, we move left to right, and whenever I press W, I jump. And this works because I'm touching the ground, and anytime I'm holding W while touching the ground, I'm gonna jump into the air. So you can just hold down W. You don't have to worry about only having the, being, being able to press it once. You can just hold it down. Okay, so one more important part about this game is that whenever we fall into the void, there's no player at all. So what we need to do is we need to set the player's X and Y position right back to the spawn. I'm actually going to do this in the player collision function. I'm just going to say if player.y is greater than 400, that means they've fallen out of the map. If it is, then I will say player.x will equal what we have up here, so 40. Player.y will equal 300. And we can also set their velocity to 20 and 20, or sorry, to 0 and 0. So now, if we were to fall off, we just spawn right back. Now we need to create a level. So to create a new wall, all you need to do is just say walls.add, create sprite. You can also copy this section up here and change the values. I'm going to do a wall at 160. 350 and 40 or 50 and 50 so as you can see that creates a wall over here that we can jump to and yeah so one more thing that we that would be nice to have in this game is to keep the frame rate the same for every player so I'm gonna set it to 45 and what that does it actually smooths the game out a little bit more as you can see but it also makes it so that anyone who's playing this game, they're going to have a frame rate of 45. Unless their computer is too slow or something like that, or they don't have good internet. But the max should be 45. Because if it were to be like 120, then as you see, the game is like really quick. <laughs> Maybe if you wanted a hard difficulty, this would be your hard difficulty. <laughs> Setting the world frame rate to 120. Anyway, we're going to keep that at 45. Right, so these are my walls, and so I'm going to show you guys a level that I created. So this is my level that I created when I was coding this game for the first time. And yeah, it's it's interesting. There's no goal or anything, but you might be able to figure out how to do something like that. So if you guys enjoyed this video, if, it found, if you found it helpful, leave a like, and I'll see you guys in the next video.